my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shamka show. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my memories and my experience of being in a daycare or so-called Detsky Sadik in Soviet Union. And precisely since I used to live in Kiev, Ukraine, Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. So I attended a uh, nursery, which is Yasli. That's the place when the kids uh, uh, go from three months till three years old and then I attended kindergarten which is from three years old till seven because at seven uh, you start school. One of the things that was great about so life in Soviet Union is uh, women had uh, quite long paid maternity leave which 56 days uh, before the birth and then 56 days after so it's total uh, about three months prior and three months after to, so half of the year of paid maternity leave plus on the top of it a uh, woman could stay at home until baby is one year old but uh, after three months then there will be unpaid maternity leave so still it's very generous terms unfortunately with people's salary being quite low not many f families could afford um, to have a uh, 50% pay cut by having a woman at home so many women actually had to take kids to the nurseries Dietzke Yasli and start working again. And another little detail I already mentioned in my previous videos that according to the law no Soviet citizen was allowed not to work without valid reason uh, so if you don't work for more than three months and you don't have a valid reason for it like you're sick or you're handicapped or something else then you can actually get in trouble and get even a jail term up to three years for being a parasite of society so even uh, if the woman wanted to stay at home and take care of her kids she couldn't do it because she had to work that was the law you must work when you live in Soviet Union Unfortunately, I don't remember at all my days at the nursery before I was three years old. Uh, but there are a lot of photos out there about tiny kids already being supervised by, uh, you know, professionals, we'll put it that way, in nurseries. So they were fed and changed. And I only can imagine uh, the hard work at the nurseries because at that time, when I was a baby in the 70s, and even when my brother, who is 15 years younger than me, uh, he was born in 1986, we didn't have a diapers, or how they call them in Soviet Union, Russia, they used the pampers. Pampers, that's the word that they use for any kind of diapers, any brand, same way like a lot of people name recliners Lazy Boys, even if it's not by Lazy Boy. So if you can imagine having 30 babies to take care of all day long who had no diapers you had to change them you had to constantly wash those cloth um, diapers the cloth inserts so that was a quite a, a hard work to be a vaspitatel or I guess you call it a teacher in the Soviet nursery so when we talk about uh, daycare in Soviet Union you can't really name it a daycare uh, that was uh, actually a separate building or maybe part of the building and the government uh, ran that facility it's called Dietsky Sad so it's like uh, if you directly translate it'll be like children's garden um, and uh, there'll be usually a group of kids I don't remember but we had quite a few kids I need to count them on my photo which you can see right here it's about about 20 kids boys and girls and uh, Daycare is open at 7 a.m. 
and it's all the way till 7 p.m. So parents drop off kids in the morning and then they pick them up at night. And I think I remember one time, usually I would be picked up around 60, 6 or 5 p.m. But one time something happened and I remember sitting late. It was just me and the teacher waiting for my parents to show up. I don't remember what happened, but it was very late. Soviet childcare was heavily sponsored by government and uh, didn't cost much to people. Uh, and for, in some instances, if you, you had a lot of kids and not a lot of uh, income, they'll be totally free. But it cost about 10 rubles a month, um, as far as I know. And it included was the meals, so there would be a breakfast, usually some kind of kasha, that's a famous... I don't like it much, but malochna kasha, milk. It's like a hot cereal with milk, uh, different kinds. Could be grechnevaya kasha or ovsyanaya kasha, uh, with a big chunk of butter or the white bread with butter and the kasha. Then we'll have lunch, and we didn't have lunch at noon. Uh, usually our meal at lunch will be around like 1 or 2 p.m. And always will be some kind of soup or borscht. And of course, uh, for the sweets, uh, we will have so-called compote, uh, which we never had, you know, like pop popular and my goodness, out of any pop, foreign pop, we only had Pepsi in 80s. But the compote, which is like boiled fruits, and you have that sweet liquid, our kisel. Uh, then we'll have a little dinner and then we go home. And the worst thing I remember about daycare, I always hated so-called quiet hour, which I think was a, like a couple of hours between one and three, we will drag out uh, these little portable cots called Rastladushka, and we were supposed to sleep and uh, take a rest for two hours. Of course, when you're a little kid, it's a quite a challenge to make yourself sleep in the middle of the day, but we had to do it every day. So there were quite a few different activities. Uh, looks like everyday care had a piano and we actually had a music teacher uh, that we will we'll learn some songs and then we'll be singing them all together. And then our daycare, as many others, had to, its own little playground across the street so, for example, after breakfast and doing a couple activities, uh, like learning some poems or maybe drawing or making something with, from Play-Doh, then we go outside and play outside. So that was everyday thing. They like to keep kids outside to get fresh air. Uh, also, we had a lot of activities for different holidays. Of course, the biggest holiday in Soviet Union, I think, was a New Year celebration, Novy God. So that'll be a big deal, and we will uh, need to have some kind of costumes for celebration. And of course, you couldn't just go to the store and purchase a costume. Like here in America, you can purchase any kind of a Halloween costume. Parents actually had to make costumes. So I remember I used to have, uh, my mom's made it, full body bear costume i liked a lot i was using a lot till i um, became too big for it and another time i was playing a sailor so one of my uh, cousins i think he served in soviet navy so he gave me his um, navy hat and then my mom made a little uh, like a suit that looks like a navy suit and that was my uh, costume for performing and then of course we'll set up a I want to say Christmas tree but in Soviet Union you call it New Year tree Novogodnya Yolka and then we'll be uh, again I want to say Santa Claus coming but we don't call them Santa Claus we call them Uncle Frost Dead Maros and he'll come over with the big bag of presents and we have this all this presentation and singing songs and then we'll get presents so that was the biggest holiday that we had uh, in our daycare and generally in Soviet Union. Another big holiday in Soviet Union was of course uh, November 7 uh, or October uh, Revolution celebration. After Re October Revolution 1970, uh, 1917, Soviet government changed the calendar uh, to match with the modern world. So 
your boy revolution happened in October on the, by the new calendar it happened in November so November 7 we'll have a big celebration of course there'll be a lot of uh, red flags and uh, poems and songs about our great leaders usually about grandpa Lenin or Dedushka Lenin and I still remember this one poem which I'll try to read it to you in Russian then I'll make a translation Мудрый и ласковый дедушка Ленин смотрит с портрета на нас, как мы читаем, как мы рисуем, как хорошо нам сейчас. And if you translate it, it's like uh, the wise and gentle or nice grandpa Lenin is looking over us from the portrait and every day here I had a picture of Lenin uh, above on the wall somewhere or painted a mural or actual picture. So he is watching over us from the photo, from this picture, and sees how great our life is, how we do different activities like painting or uh, writing. So that's, I still remember that rhyme. So that was another big holiday we celebrated as a kids in the daycare. And of course, another big holiday will be May 1st, International Labor Day. And it's interesting because at that time, I didn't know that it all started in Chicago but uh, there's a big spring holiday may 1st and then of course may 9 which is so-called victory day a celebration of the victory over nazi germany in world war ii which we called uh, soviet historian kind of split the war in two wars so we have world war ii and then we have the great patriotic war so the war between germany and soviet union is a great patriotic war what happened before and what happened after it's a world war ii so it's interesting, um, I don't want to get into a discussion of why it was done, but uh, May 1st, International Labor Day, Международный Рабочий День, will be, will be celebrating too with flags and all that good stuff. And of course, there'll be a big parade in downtown Kiev. And then May 9, another big holiday will be coming right after that, uh, celebration of the Victory Day. And that was like a big holiday weekend for Soviet people, which most people utilize going out in the country and planting potatoes. <laughs> the nice thing about uh, Soviet daycare, Dietsky Sadik, was that we actually had professionals dealing with kids. Be not like here, some person runs daycare, pretty much as long as you get the license, you don't really need education, you just keep kids busy and safe until parents at work. Over there, there was professionals and there were scheduled activities. So that was like a preschool pretty much. And we had a basic math, you know, you learn shapes. Uh, so they were prepping you for school, uh, trying to learn a little bit alphabet. So that was a lot of useful uh, things in the daycare. And of course, we didn't have TV at all. Uh, so. I consider myself lucky because I was born in Soviet Union and I was an adult pretty much in Soviet Union because when Soviet Union collapsed in 1991 I was only 20 so it kind of was a perfect time and to, I think it was great to grow up in Soviet Union to be as a kid but it wasn't fun to be as an adult. So from my point of view I really like the fact that I grew up in Soviet Union and that I had experience of being a Soviet daycare. Uh, I didn't have any bad memories. Of course, you know, when you're a little kid, you always want to be with your mommy. But looking around how my kids, you know, you're trying to always find some good daycare. And daycare is so expensive right now in America. And on the other hand, if the parents, you know, keep the kid at home with, with minimal uh, interaction with other kids, I don't think it, that's a good idea. I would say maybe it's okay uh, to kid to be with uh, his mom up to maybe two years old, but I think one year old max, then they need to go out there and to interact with other kids and learn uh, skills to be in, you know, society among other kids, because you learn it quicker having someone same kind of level. Uh, so that's my thought about daycare. So. Uh, that's my story about uh, Soviet uh, daycare, Dietsky Sadik, and next one we'll start uh, looking at the Soviet school system. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.